Uh, thank you very much, first of all, to the organizers, to the school, school of uh, Physics here, and um, uh, for inviting me to present the, the case study for Spain in uh, solar photovoltaics. Um, first of all, I have to acknowledge uh, Charles Hall, the previous uh, speaker, because uh, without him it would have been impossible to write uh, what is based on this uh, case study, which is the study of the solar uh, photovoltaic situation in Spain. He was, uh, we, th th that started in 2007 in Cork, in Ireland, where we were sharing a, pin a pint of beer in a pub, in an Irish pub in Cork, uh, during the seventh uh, international conference of ASPO. And uh, then I, I told Charles, uh, well, probably what you have here about the EROE of solar photovoltaics in your uh, balloon diagram is higher than what I guess is happening in Spain. And um, he, instead of refusing, because he was already a worldwide uh, known, well-known master in, in ROE, he invited me, he challenged me. He said, OK, let's go and try to work together. And he devoted to me hundreds of hours. And we were back and forth with a, a lot of data, back and forth, back and forth. He wiped me a lot of times and said, you, you do not have to present this like this. This is not academic, you have to go, and, and so on. So finally, we came up with this book, uh, Spain's Photovoltaic Revolution, which is really a revolution in both senses, because it's, it, we, we are not going to talk very, very well about uh, solar PV, as many could uh, derive from the title, but um, probably we will see what, what is uh, happening. Let me see if why we choose Spain. Well, uh, b just because I, I have been working for several years, uh, I mean, I, I come from the telecommunication work. I work many years in Alcatel. And, um, and then uh, I, I, I was very familiar with uh, solar photovoltaic systems. But then since 2004, I started to work on uh, massive deployment of solar photovoltaic uh, technologies uh, in, in Spain. So I was uh, involved uh, already by 2007 in about 15 to 20 megawatts of different types of plants with technologies, with topologies and typologies. And that, that was a good uh, uh, starting, a, a good beginning. So also because Spain has a reasonable, stable and balanced electricity network, and a good management. I, I, it's a pity that the uh, internet is not working because I could have presented to you online production and the split of energy second by second in Spain. Uh, now at, the, at this moment we are generating 27% of wind. Uh, our, our electricity demand now in Spain at this moment is 27% of wind. It was 4.6 of uh, solar photovoltaic, 3 in solar thermal, uh, and, and so on. And uh, nuclear, it was about 22, and so on. So uh, also because if you see Spain here in the losses of the, even, even we have a country which is big in, 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 in territory and not so big in population, so we have population concentrated in those areas, but uh, the network is already quite stable. I mean, it's as stable as that of Germany or Japan. Uh, for the territory, we are stable. I mean, we are even bigger than United States or France in losses in the transmission grid, etc. So it's a good starting point as well. Uh, uh, then uh, we have the best irradiation in Europe. If you look at here, especially in the southern Spain and the archipelagos here and the, in the Canary Island, we have the best irradiation in, in Europe. And then we have very accurate, we had a very accurate uh, set of data provided by the government, uh, it's official data. So we, we could know in, in this sense how many megawatts were installed every month, month by month in any of the regions of Spain. But we knew much more. I mean, we know production month by month, year by year, either in solar or in solar CSP or in wind, et cetera, et cetera. So we have very good and accurate statistics. Uh, for instance, we have by region here, we can, we can also know how many installations we have how many, uh, how much energy they are they generating, etc. <coughs> we took three complete year cycles, uh, 2009, 10, and 11. And that was good because I'm, I, I think I'm going to need some water because my throat is, is not very good. But in any case, okay, I'll, I'll try to manage. 
Uh, we selected these three years in, in solar photovoltaic and because uh, in that moment already Spain had already entered into the beginning of the big economic and financial crisis and did not grow very much. So in order to have, when, when you have um, installed power and this installed power is quite stable, it's much easier and much more accurate to conclude what is the real energy generated. Because if you are installing and installing power in a country, then it's more difficult. Unless you have very accurate data, data day by day is much more difficult to extrapolate how much real energy is being generated. So, three years. Uh, we have also uh, a lot of, I mean, uh, the, the methodology is, uh, what we have used the retrospective analysis. I mean, what we have used is not a theory. It's not how solar photovoltaic is going to work in the future. How much do we expect for new technologies like nano cells or, or uh, organic cells or nanotubes or whatever it is, or multi-silicon, polysilicon, single uh, crystalline uh, or uh, amorphous or whatever. is made on retrospective, not on prospective analysis. So it's what it really happened in real life in Spain. So we choose, uh, I mean, uh, we choose what it was in the, in the market. Uh, it was freely and available select, selected by investors and by promoters as they consider more convenient. So Spain was a very free market and how was it composed? Well, the topology is uh, in fixed plants, uh, they were 63 with one axis trackers uh, 13, two axis uh, trackers 24. The typology is rooftop installations, contrary to Germany, only 2.2%. Two, two, 2 Most of them, they were scale utility plants, 97.8. We will see in the future, uh, later in the presentation, that scale utility is much more efficient, uh, efficient than, than uh, rooftop installations because you have uh, uh, scale uh, um, possibilities. The size, the plants uh, below 2 megawatts were 36 percent, uh, between 2 and 520 and so on. And technology basically it was uh, crystalline silicon, uh, 97, thin film a little bit and high concentration uh, photovoltaics, uh, it was very little. Mm -hmm. So that were the different types of technologies. So this morning they have, uh, somebody has asked a question about how much uh, uh, territory was occupying uh, uh, the, the energy of... This is, this is a very interesting side, aside from photovoltaics. This is Western Spain. It's a nuclear power plant of two gigawatts here. It's Almaraz power plant, two reactor of one gigawatt each. And this is a uh, solar photovoltaic uh, plant of 23 megawatt, megawatts. So if, we, if you compare the 22% load in the factor here and the 85, 87% in the nuclear power plant, so you get um, a comparison that uh, if you take this, I mean, of course, if you uh, discard all the refrigeration for the nuclear power plant here in the lake, uh, this will occupy about 1.5 kilometers versus the five square kilometers generate, generating 335 times less energy than the nuclear power plant. So to equalize uh, this nuclear power plant in solar photovoltaics, we will need about 500 square kilometers of storage. That's uh, just for comparison. Uh, well, uh, we have um, in primary energy, uh, we are uh, very much dependent on oil. Somebody, uh, I don't know who, who was this morning, told me that probably the, the, the main uh, affection of, of the economic and financial crisis to the countries of Southern Europe was this heavy dependence of oil. And we, we are now a little bit less. We were almost dependent on 40% or 49% of oil. But uh, in any case, we are diverted. And so we have in nuclear here. Uh, this is uh, when talking about uh, primary energy. But we have also a good part of the cake in wind, solar, and uh, geothermal, and biomass also here. So it's not bad. If, if we go to electricity, ele in electricity we are much more diversified. This is nuclear, coal, uh, this is ga natural gas, but this is uh, wind, uh, hydro is here, um, and solar photovoltaics and CSP, uh, they are here. So. We have a relatively good uh, 
about uh, somebody said also this morning that the peak of consumption, uh, electricity consumption in France is about 100 gigawatts. So our peak uh, maximum uh, historic peak in Spain is about 42 gigawatts. But we have installed, uh, we have uh, about uh, two, 106 gigawatts of installed power. So we are much below, we have a very big margin for, for I mean, of idle capacity. Uh, that's the evolution of primary energy in Spain. You see how the crisis has affected us. We are consuming now today about 20% uh, less energy. The GDP has also suffered a, a, a sort of fell, fell down, and that's uh, the, the crude reality. And this is, uh, I don't know if, if we have time, but this is, this is something we, are been, we have been suffering in Spain. It's about, we, we are already uh, passed uh, since uh, 2004, where the first decree, royal decree on renewables with the Conservative Party in the power, uh, with only 10 megawatts install, uh, ba install base, uh, proposed to install up to 380 megawatts for all Spain up in 2010. That was 2004. So when the people said and discovered that this could be a good economic opportunity, and most of the people look at the development of solar photovoltaic as financial uh, business and as an economic opportunity rather than an ecologic opportunity. So we started to have uh, some jumps and jumps and jumps in new laws and decrees and orders, etc. So now we are about 20 laws and that have spoiled the whole uh, renewable market in Spain. Some of them, uh, I mean, at the, at the beginning, we were receiving, uh, th there were promises to receive 575% of the public price of electricity for 20 years uh, from the installation. And then onwards, 44 cents of euro per kilowatt hour generated into the future uh, without any limit. So this was like, a, like a becoming marquis, I mean, having a, a grant uh, for, for life. So uh, at the beginning, banks didn't know how to proceed. They didn't know even photovoltaic. I have seen even licenses to build uh, photovolcanic plants because municipalities <laughs> didn't know even what photovol photovoltaic energy was. So it's, it's something very interesting. But then they immediately learned what was uh, that meaning. So and that, uh, everybody understood that this could be a business. So when we were already in uh, 215 megawatts in two 2007, still the crisis had not arrived, then uh, the government realized that the first re royal decree said, okay, 380 megawatts, but we didn't specify where to cut, where to, to cut the installations up to 350. My God, we have 215, but there are about 1,000 more megawatts that whose equipment has been already purchased, the lands have been acquired, the installation are being carried out, so what do we do about that? So they didn't dare to stop that, so they continue giving licenses and then they reach here in the middle of the crisis in 2008 and they say, okay, stop up to here, so many people, and then it, it, it came the disaster. So they say, well, now you have to register first. We are going to limit the registration of new plants. And uh, of course, there is a limit. And then it's September 2008. And then everybody ran like mad to bring mud panels and modules to Spain from China, from wherever, I mean, by plane. So it was something ridiculous. I mean, bringing modules by plane, this is an extra cost. This is something, but they, they needed to be connected into the network before September 2008. It was the deadline. So that was unbelievable. So it, it was, they, they had to make an, an anti-fraud decree because then they say, okay, no, I'm not arriving on time. I have a plan of 20 megawatts. I've seen a plan of 20 megawatts in the, in the very side of a motorway. And you could see that they said they had promised that they had already connected to the grid, but they have three panels in each, in each plan of 100 kilowatts just to make the meter to run and to get there. So that was unbelievable. So that was, I mean, then they started to stop, to, uh, to put some brakes and so on, changing the tariffs, so they, they imposing new taxes now. We are the only country that is being taxed. Uh, I mean, we, I am taxed by my solar photovoltaic production in a 7% of all my income. 
I mean, it's like, like going to Walmart and, and say to them, now you, you are, we are going to impose you a new tax of 7% of everything that goes through the cash. So that is it's not on the benefit, it's on the production. So it's, it's something unbelievable. So they have, they have spoiled the market. So that's the final point on that. But this is, this is you have seen that, it's uh, from, uh, uh, I put here Lambert, uh, Charles Hall and so on. Uh, here in Spain already what is happening is that th th these three building blocks are being collapsed, are falling apart, no? Starting by arts, uh, so <laughs> theaters and <laughs> all these things, the philharmonicas in every town, so they are, they are going down, healthcare is going down, education is going down, support families is still maintaining uh, the 50% of the jobless people in the, among the youth is uh, being, uh, uh, I mean, prevented here. So this is our last frontier for the time being. But then I have, <laughs> for the time being, so I have an, a, different point, a, a different point of view. So I see the hunter-gatherers here, uh, um, they have a metabolic level of uh, 2 to 3 to 1, so uh, here we have the, what uh, Charles said is the minimum ROE required for civilization. This is the five to one approximately, five to one, the Egyptians, that they started in the Neolithic to release uh, priests and kings and soldiers and military and uh, only productive work uh, could be or making pyramids or something like that. So that was five to one. Now we have the advanced agriculture society, which needs a little bit more. Then the initial industrial society, a little bit more, uh, with a different range, uh, depending on the country and, and uh, on the stage and so on. So we have the modern uh, industrial development society, a little bit more. And then we have finally the industrial and technological society in which we live. This is the Google, the Google servers, which are consuming like a city of one million inhabitants, or they are, I mean, the uh, internet, uh, the other day I saw a, uh, a study saying that internet is consuming eight to nine percent of the electricity in the world. So and it's, this is all the, uh, how do you call it, discretionary instead of sta staple. Huh? This is discretionary, most of it, hmm? most of it. But we need this ROE to survive. So that's the inverted pyramid <laughs> point of view. Uh, this is from, uh, uh, from Cleveland, eh? Cleveland. So this is the sort of how to analyze the ROE, uh, negative energy involved during the construction, then the maintenance is a negative energy, but then you are starting to generate energy, you have some cell conception, and then the consumers, this is the commissioning, at the beginning everybody was very concerned about the commissioning and so on, now it's not so important for many people, so, so you, you have to... Um, um, to uh, discount this, all this uh, energy spent, and then you have the net energy as a final result. So what we did for Spain, it was trying to lead to see a little bit more in a holistic form, uh, like this. So we tried to calculate also something which is the pre-existing societal sine qua non energy cost to be able to have an energy system up and running. So there are some costs that we are ignoring here in conventional ROE studies, without them, uh, we could not have neither uh, nuclear nor solar plants nor any other type of plants. So that's the different type. Of, I mean, and then when you add all these things, then the, en the net energy may decrease substantially at the end of the, of the day. So that's a, a different holistic view. And this is our Sankey diagram of solar photovoltaic energy in Spain. So we start here, then we have to analyze all this, uh, we are going to go point by point, all these points up to here, where is the digital meter, low tension, low voltage digital meter, where the ministry measures all the generated energy in the solar PV plants, and all this, when you make a project of solar photovoltaic uh, system, uh, is what you call performance ratio, peer. And this is normally between uh, 84, uh, what we calculated really was 78 or something like that, but big investors wanted to be around 84. They, uh, they could admit losses up to 84, but not, not more. So that, that, that this, these were some, some type of losses. Now we will go one by one. And what uh, the only ones uh, important and uh, for investors, because what you were going to receive in income, in money, was measured here in the low voltage meter. 
and that was uh, what we call uh, nominal megawatts, which is different than the peak megawatts. I, I will explain why. Because there is here an uh, overdimensioning of solar photovoltaic plants in Spain. So uh, there are some other factors which are not usually consi considered that we also have considered. And then we have the mm, medium voltage uh, digital meter here at the end, which is at, uh, to the effects of the energy return on investment. This is the figure that we, we should take for granted. It's not what we are going to receive economically just because the ministry pays us. It's what really gets into the network, into the electric network at the end. Okay? So let's uh, go and let's move forward. So we are, we are going to start uh, studying the performance ratio. And uh, first of all, we, we have to know how much energy are we presuming that we are going to produce uh, and we need the lifetime of the system. And the lifetime of the system, the energy task group of the International Energy Agency uh, consider now 30 years. I don't know why they consider 30 years. We have a big quarrel with them and we have been dealing with them and uh, now uh, some people in, uh, in the, in the interested in EROE has said that this, is, this should be changed, but this is what is at present. Because they say, we have some panels that, that we can grant that they have lasted more than 25 years. And this is truth. I, I've seen in the School of Telecommunications in Madrid, there are some very good panels that are working already since 30 years, uh, and they are working. But this, this is not what we have to consider. We have to consider the average. I mean, if, if the manufacturers uh, manufacturers warranty the power for 25 years, but even, before, even, even worse, they warranty the modules only for 5 or 10 or maximum 12 years, but generally speaking for 5 years, then what, what do we do? What, how, what do we take for, for, for good as lifetime of a module? Uh, well, uh, especially when you go to negotiate with uh, Santec or with Trina or with any Canadian solar or so on and say, well, what happened to me? You say that the guarantee of power is 25 years and then the material warranty is 5 to 10 years or 5 years or 10 years. So what happens in year 11, my module fails. They say, well, the former, uh, the later warranty supersedes the former. So you have to throw out the module and you will not get paid. So, well, that's life. Uh, so the European uh, Association PV cycle is measuring very accurately what is being uh, thrown out because it's faulty and is, uh, uh, they are discarding all these modules. And um, for the volume of modules uh, rejected or discarded to be uh, decommissioned and, and recycled, if possible, uh, we could uh, infer that uh, the, the life cycle in Europe now is about uh, 18 years. Uh, so there are some other hints in TV, the Rhineland in Germany that they mentioned that 30% of modules uh, are, have serious deficiencies or 70% of modules have minor defects and so on. So we made the case study for 25 years. That's uh, what we think is a conservative analysis. 25 years is the maximum that the manufacturer offers and then we will see that we were not very much uh, uh, deviated from what it may be the reality. <coughs> so losses by mismatch. Uh, this means uh, that modules in a certain system may not be the same or even from the same manufacturer may not have exactly the same specifications. They, they, they give, uh, usually they, they are giving 0.6% a, a of uh, reduction in, in the production because the mismatch, mismatch of modules. This is what uh, losses by dust. Uh, when the dust, this is a module with dust, a module, a, a wash module here. So uh, normally they could loss between 4 and 12 percent. And uh, there are some areas in the world where people is uh, talking very happily about going to desert tech or going to northern Africa or something like that. Well, southern Spain Southeastern Spain is more like this than like this. I mean, dust is very important. Dust is very important, especially in some desertic areas where the people think that they are going to generate mass more. So in severe conditions, they may, be, uh, they may lower the production as much as 25%. But it's not normal. I mean, uh, for that, normally what we do is contracts for washing the modules 
which uh, we talk, we'll talk a little bit later, and is uh, we have estimated the losses by dust in uh, 1%. Not, not me, but normally the industry. I mean, in the industry normally calculates uh, 1%, and the investors as well. Hmm? Angular losses. Uh, angular losses here imply that not all the modules are generated exactly the same when the sun uh, projects over the, over the modules. Or these ones, which are absolutely ridiculous because look at where, it, where the sun is. And so the angular losses can be, can be huge, huh? can be huge. Well, we, we have been very conservative and we have estimated in a 1%. I've seen here in, in France, but especially in Germany, I have seen many houses that they are beautifully prepared from the aesthetic point of view with the modules, but they are not uh, south oriented. So, but, but this is this is life. I mean, so non fulfillment of power at the beginning. At the beginning, I mean, talking be at the beginning, 2008, 2009, 2010, they they were having specs of plus minus five percent of the nominal power granted. Now they are going more to minus five, minus zero, plus five watts in a module. Mm -hmm. But there is a small trick on that. When you go to the, when you go to the, the stakes yeah, and bones and go to the manufacturer and say, okay, 240 watts this module peak, but on, under which conditions? They say, oh yes, then when there is a radiation of 850 watts per square meter with an air mass of 0.5, and a temperature of 20 degrees. You say, oh, that's good, that's very good. But the air mass, when, when, when you have an air mass of 0.5, when sun is just in perpendicular to the module, when you have 20 degrees, when you have 800 watts per square meter, not in Spain in most of the time, it's probably one day in a year, because when you have 850 watts per square meter, you probably are 35 degrees, and then you, you do not have the specs as, as it is. So. We have considered, we have dismissed this. I mean, we have been very conservative in our study, 0%. Uh, losses due to temperature, that's, that's the point. Eh? Losses due to temperature, this is temperature in winter, temperature in summer in Spain that can reach easily 40 degrees and so on. And so we are, this is, uh, for instance, Suntec as a public specification of one, the, the biggest uh, module producer in the world. Um, 45 degrees plus minus two, and uh, they have operating cell. These are losses per each uh, uh, Celsius uh, degree additional, 0.3 uh, on, 20, on 20 degrees, on 20 degrees Celsius. So you, you can get losses very important due to temperature. So if you go to Africa or you go to southern Spain, you will have a lot of sun, but you will have serious losses due to high temperatures when the sun is shining most of the year. This year is very good because it's winter, the sun was shining in Spain and we were getting 4.6% of our electricity at a given point in the midday. Uh, losses for shadowing, that's another interesting point because shadowing, oh, you, see, you should see the German Bundestag has uh, some modules which are not oriented at all to the south. This, look, this and this, either one of them is not well oriented. Huh? So this module has the shadowing of their own roof. This module is vertical and has some palm trees, beautiful palm trees in front, and so on. So losses for shadowing are important. So and, and we have we have left them aside. Okay, no no problem. We we do not consider this as losses. Losses in the inverter. Well, inverters have improved a lot since uh, some time. Uh, when uh, we started with inverters, they promised to be 95% efficient, which is incredibly high. I mean, in my opinion, is getting direct current and making sinusoidal 50 years, uh, 220 volts is, is a miracle. And getting from that 95, 97% is a miracle. But, but this is the theor in theory. In the reality, it's about 95% uh, or something like that when you go and expose that to the to the heat and some, something like that. So we assume 5.4% losses in the inverter uh, in, in our study. Then we have some other losses that normally are not considered, uh, which are the losses from the inverters to the transformer house. Uh, this is the wiring, and sometimes there are hundreds of meters to the, to the transformer house, and so we assume to be only 0.4%. Uh, this is also conservative. Hmm? in our opinion. Uh, and then we reach here, up to here, and now we are going to see some other, 
some other losses that they were not considered. For instance, what is out of the performance ratio is this, from transformer housing to, the, to this uh, housing, to the, to the other housing, which is taking that to the evacuation line. These losses we have considered just a 2.1%, but for instance, Iberdrola, one of the power utilities, is taking 3% to the uh, producers as a discount because they say this is, these are losses they, they should not take care about because the medium, the low tension meter, uh, digital meter is here, the medium tension meter is here, either here, so the loss, that losses, no, is here, so they say that losses, you, you have to bear that losses, not us in the power utility when, when you are injecting to the network. So um, there are some other losses like voltac, voltage sucks and swells. So these are uh, interruptions or variations of tensions in, in the network, in the main network, in the, in the electric grid. So when we, and, uh, Spain, as I mentioned, is a very stable network, but in rural areas, sometimes you have over tensions or low tensions or even cuts. And then you, you blame on whoever it is when you have a, a cut in the, in the wires, in the, in the tension line, and then you have a beautiful sun and you cannot export a single watt. So this is a loss. This is a loss that's had to be accounted, and nobody accounts in traditional ROE of solar photovoltaics. So we have made it uh, based on statistics, and we have, even that, uh, we have considered 0%. But uh, I know that the, I, have, I have some figures, and it's, it's much closer to 1%. And in African countries, it could be 50%, or it could be the go-no-go -no -go situation. Yeah, in our study, yes. Uh, more. Uh, now, that is an important thing in Spain. Uh, is overdimensioning over of panels. So you in, in register a plant of 100 kilowatts because the, up to 100 kilowatts you got the biggest tariff. Uh, so everybody prepare 100 kilowatts uh, power plants, even multinationals. Uh, with 20 megawatts, uh, they prepare 200 unitary plants of 100 kilowatts. So, to, 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 how do you call it, to avert, to, to round? Circumvent. To? Circumvent. Uh -huh, to circle the, the law. Hmm? Circumvent. Well, in, circumvent. Ah, circum. Vent. Circumvent. 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 To go around. To go around. And, and it, it was totally legal because their lawyers consulted to the ministry and they say, oh, yes, sir, I have a uh, limited liability company here in these 100 kilowatts. So uh, I have 200, but it's uh, company number one, company number two, company number three, and then the company number 200, and then we have a special purpose company on top, which I think I have here, yes. This is 100 kilowatts per each plant, and then we have here a turnkey. The project is only one, the construction is only one, the financial is only one to each of the individual plants, of course, but it's everything controlled by one, and then they have the 20, 30 megawatts plants. <laughs> So, but everyone is 100 kilowatts. Uh, why 100 kilowatts? To keep the highest tariff. That was the story of Spain. Because at the beginning, the government was trying to do the things well, and they didn't want to give to the big multinationals. They were intended to be to the public and so on, but at the end, they fell down in the, in the hands of the big investors. So, the, we, we assess in, in our uh, study there were no official figures on how much overdimensioning was this. Because we knew that many people said, okay, from the legal point of view, you can install more than 100 kilowatts, provided that outside the inverter, in any case, in no one single second in the year, uh, there are living more than 100 kilowatts. But the modern inverters can cut the energy to the 100 kilowatts. So you can be producing here 105, 108, 120, and the inverter will always give 100. Why they made overdimensioning? Because they gain in peak hours. <coughs> and in gaining in peak hours, they will get much more subsidized premium tariffs than normally. And they were compensating largely, they were compensating this extra overdimensioning of panels. So, we didn't have data, and I said to Charlie, uh, what do we do? Because I guess that it must be, for the plants I have seen, I guess it must be about 8%. Eight, eight 
well, I, we, we underestimate. In fact, it was 20%. When the government in royal decree number 17 or something like that came back again and say, oh, gentlemen, we are sorry, but now we are going to pay only for effectiveness of 100 kilowatts. And we have determined how much you are going to take energy if you are in region 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of, of Spain, and we will pay you for that energy and no more, irrespectively of what you have installed. And then the industry immediately raise their hands and they say, oh, but you are killing us because we invested in 120 kilowatts. I mean, you are killing us in a 20% of the income. So the industry declared themselves that they have overdimension in 20%. So I, I have only dimension in a 3%, so I am a poor man. Uh, so that's the that's frontier of the legal point, uh, the 100 and so on. So that's uh, what the industry admitted and that's all. So evacuation line. So many people do not understand that after that, to get to the grid, to the electric grid, sometimes you have to erect an evacuation line. Uh, this evacuation line may be just immediately in, in a big plant or it may be as far as 15 kilometers, depending on where the plant is located. And this has an energy that we have studied uh, about a 2.4 percent in, the in our study case. Uh, these are losses. Uh, other losses are degradation of modules. Is the loss because of the good effects or is the loss because of the energy and quality because of the construction of the line? Sorry? It's, it's both. It's both. It's losses in the line, which are not very much, but the losses in the in, in the poles and in the in the copper wires and all these things. I mean, this, this is, I, I will give you an example later because uh, um, I, have, I, I have made the project for a five megawatts plant, two, two five megawatts plants uh, of about five kilometers evacuation line and it had to be underground evacuation line because some ecological reasons and so on, it could not be aerial and this is a lot of money. Uh, this is the de degradation of modules on time. This is what the, the, when the manufacturer guarantees 25 years here they say, well, I, I guarantee you 25 years, but this is year one, it's 100%, but we go down, we go down with time up to 80% approximately in year 25. So we guarantee, for instance, up to year number 10, 90% of power, and up to year 25, 80% of power. This is what they guarantee. So if you levelize this degradation of power and you put, in a, uh, you put all together, then the cost of this is about 11.4 less than uh, what is uh, peak power. Is, this is the gradation of modules over time, 2.5. So we reach up to that point. This is the, the final result with which we have worked out in the energy input. The energy input requires the energy output we took from the ministry because they are official data, but the, genera, the, <coughs> sorry, the, gen, the energy input, we took it from there. And now let's see makes a review of how do we see these things. Well, what normally is being taken in the ROE, in the conventional ROEs, is the cost of energy inputs of this, sand, silicon, to take the sand into silicon, into ingots, wafer, etc., cells, modules, etc. And a little bit sometimes of metallic infrastructure and a little bit of inverters, but nothing else about whatever is in the surroundings. Mm -hmm. And this is, of course, you need clean rooms, machinery, factory building, sand, smelting, transport, mining, etc. So it's difficult to calculate that, but uh, this is a typical input content. In, in, uh, so we gave for granted this. We gave for granted uh, there are many studies on uh, conventional energy inputs here that they say that the, usually uh, they range from an ROE of 4 to 1 to an ROE of 12 to 1. But Banker and Gale and many others, then they say uh, in 20 studies, and so we took, we took an average and we say we are not going to discuss the 100 papers that have been published about conventional ROE of solar, considering only this, okay? But we are going to, to go a little bit beyond. So we are going to see... Uh, yes, no, uh, the, the 8.3 eight, eight uh, is for solar PV, but to get a feeling of how to compare to, uh, it would be the 14 point something for our society. Yeah, yeah, point. yeah, that's it, that's okay. it. So, so it's already below. This, this, is, this is already below, but 
there is a still a but, a big but. Uh, then we have some other uh, other expenses. For instance, fences. We have uh, um, 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 equipment in the outskirts, uh, movement, earth movements, canalization, fences, uh, concrete, access, external and internal. Some plants they have to build up the roads, paved roads, or even compacted roads in many cases, which are one kilo. This this is one kilometer length, about, and then they have the internal ones. So these are tons and tons of gravel. Mm? These are the boxes for the connection points in the, in the different lines of cable. So we calculated that as 1.1% of the total energy uh, generated uh, in, uh, in, in, in the life cycle of the plants. Then we have, as, as I mentioned to you, the evacuation lines and the rights of way. This is the, the plant, it's a five megawatts plant. Then we have to make a, a underground up to the substation here. And this is five kilometers, and it costs about 350,000 euros uh, for a five megawatts plant. So it's, uh, this, this, these are the, um, um, some equipment which is compulsory in Spain and is for the electric operator and the government to be able to cut off the power plant if required for maintenance or whatever in remote control. So that's, these are the operations. So we calculate that as a 0.1%, it's a very conservative, of the total energy uh, output. Uh, operation and maintenance is, uh, we have already a lot of experience in operation and maintenance and we calculated as 7.7. .7. It could be a little bit less in very well and modern plants, 6%, something like that, but if you ask to somebody that has been operating a plant, a large plant, I mean, even smaller plants are much more, much more expensive. Rooftop sometimes are have much more expensive but we calculated this as 7.7%. .7%. Module washing. Uh, in, in the contracts, normally to avoid dust and to avoid degradation of panels, faster degradation of panels, we make contracts for washing. A couple of times a year, for instance, in western Spain, southern Spain in Almeria, you will rather need four washings a year, and sometimes even specific washing after a, some Saharan, uh, uh, Saharan winds, winds bring some dust, and so on. And this is expensive because this, this water is, uh, is not any common water, it's not tap water. It has to be filtered, it has, has to be prepara, prepared, and sometimes it's deionized. De and um, in some parts of southern Europe, it has to be desalinated first, because in southern Spain. So it has a, an extra cost, but we calculated very little the cost of washing, 0.2%. Uh, uh, Self-consumption of the plants. The plants are consuming energy, especially those who have trackers, huh? but also the fixed ones, also in the inverters, the, the fans in the inverters, and the machinery inside the plant, and, and so on, energy communications, and so on, invest. Uh, so we calculate 0.5 of the energy. In some cases, is much higher. And in some other cases, I mean, the government says, well, the energy you spend in moving these trackers, you have to discount from the energy generated. Don't be smart. Because if you pick a cheap energy, electric energy from the network, you are, you are making a trick. Huh? Because then you get premium tariff energy generated, so you have to discard. But for some others, like for instance the control rooms, they allow to connect from the cheap electricity coming from the network, separated from the energy generated from the modules. So in, if this energy would have to be paid also to, to the premium tariff uh, prices, it will be probably a little bit higher than this. Uh, security and surveillance. Uh, well, sometimes <coughs> this is an expensive issue, especially for big plants which needs to, to have special equipment and detectors and uh, patrols uh, going north uh, night and day and so on. Uh, Transportation, that's uh, the issue. I'm, I'm not going to put the plane because that was the case of Spain when in a rush to bring panels from China, but this is very common. Eh? The, most of the panels are now are coming from China. I mean, European manufacturers are, have almost disappeared. In Spain, there are three or four, yes, that's all. I mean, they were more than 20. And, and, and in Germany, I, I guess that they have also, with problems, I mean, China has taken over. And this, this is a lot of, I mean, this is a lot of distance to be covered. Eh? Um, so we have then uh, maintenance, uh, I mean, you have a diode or a, or a, or a, or a device, like a power device in, in an inverter or something like that, you have to ask for DHL, maintenance is coming here, 
this is the ports, uh, this is the gravel, I mean, um, handling the modules, tracks, uh, etc. So we calculate as 1.9% in transportation of all the energy contained, uh, all the energy that is going to be produced. Equipment stealing and vandalism. This is not, nobody will consider that in Germany because nobody steals in Germany, but they, they are stealing sometimes uh, the, the modules in many countries in the world. Huh? In Spain, they are stealing the modules. This is, this, this is a photograph of Guardia Civil of two months ago. This, this was, and not only modules, this is, this is copper, copper wires. And copper wires are this thick huh, sometimes. So copper wires are, uh, when you sell them uh, as a scratch in a, in, a, in, a, in a buyer, when you sell them, they are five euros per kilo. So if they do like they did here, this is uh, 50 kilometers from my plant, uh, if they do as, as, they, as they did here, in half an hour, they can get 5,000 kilos of copper, but they spoil completely the plant. I mean, they don't touch the modules, they just take the copper. They cut the copper uh, behind, the, behind each of the rows, they cut the copper, they go to the inverter housing, they cut the copper again, and then they pull with a, with a van, they pull the copper from the underground with a van, and then they take uh, like it is, then in that moment the Guardia Civil arrive and they have to escape, because they have a warning system, early warning system, when they see the Guardia Civil, they escape. So, modules. Or this is, this, this has happened in Italy, for instance. They, they were a German company doing an installation and then the people offer in Sicilia, they offer local, local, manu, uh, local installers and they say, no, it's a turnkey project made by Germans. So they, they, they made a very beautiful turnkey project and the day next in the morning, uh, after the, all the modules were installed, appear with uh, shootings in every module. Uh, this, these are things that have to be considered in the cost, and we put just a very conservative 0.2%. In some countries, could be as high as 10% or 5%. Communications, remote control and ma management. This is uh, communication wireless lines uh, in, in areas, in remote areas, where and remote control. Uh, I, I, I could see my plant here. I, I have it's a problem, but I could see how it's generating. No, no, it should not be generating too much, but. Uh, I could show you the generation. So, and communication have also a cost, uh, well, well, very, very little, because I come from telecommunication, so I know that. <laughs> Faulty modules, inverters, and trackers. So that's, uh, this is what I mentioned about PV cycle, when they say that uh, this is by technology, this is the number of modules, and so on. Uh, some of them uh, with uh, hot spots here, uh, but some other broken sealant, uh, misaligned bus bars, interconnection, broken cells and so on. So this is in, uh, this is what I commented before in 2004, between four, some 40, in Spain for instance, 2014, we installed 40 megawatts, but they, they decommissioned 40 megawatts, so we're break even. Hmm? And why we de decommissioned? Not necessarily because they were broken, or, or in, because the, the broken were the companies administrating the, the, the solar plants. So uh, in the, uh, at, the, at the effect of generating energy is more or less the same. I mean, there is, there is grass around the, the plants now. Um, so this, is, this equals about 90 megawatts decommission in Europe. And this is, if you go to the, to the cost, is 0.8% of the total energy generated throughout the lifetime. Uh, electric network power lines and restructuring. This is the map of Spain. This is sinking points, I mean consumption centers, Barcelona, Madrid, Valencia, uh, here it should be Bilbao. These are generating points, nuclear power plants here, hydroelectric uh, thermal plants over there, uh, here in uh, where, I, where I live now in the farm, I live in the farm here. Uh, well, there are, this is, this is how the, if you see here, the sunniest part of Spain has almost no consumption and has a very good irradiation, but has no generation points, so no big electrical power lines. So you have to build up the infrastructure. You have to build up. It's not constructed sometimes. Or sometimes it's, there are long evacuation lines to the, to, the, to the place. So and what is happening is that the networks are already deployed basically to big generation plants. They go up in, the, in voltage, transport network, the, so they go to the distribution network, they go down in, tension, in voltage, and then they go to the residential. Uh, this is the normal direction. But then now, if solar photovoltaic plants are overwhelmingly installed in the electric network, we are injecting that way. 
we are injecting the opposite side. So, and this is not free. I mean, this has a cost. Mm? Has a cost in, uh, it's a 3.5% of total output. And we, what we have done is uh, just ignore the extra cost of uh, uh, electric lines to get into the, into the network or the requalification of uh, transformers that sometimes the substations have no enough capacity and they need to, to put a, a higher power transformer and so on. 3.5 is what the, in 2009, 2011, Spain was generating at the end of the year in solar photovoltaic energy. So if you have an electric grid that costs to maintain a yearly, the national grid, X, and then you produce 3.5% of solar energy, this solar energy should have on their shoulders about 3.5% of the cost of maintaining and improving and uh, repairing the um, electric network. This is the 3.5. Force major. This is a, another thing that nobody has considered, but force major, this is hail. By the way, I had a very beautiful project with the university, German University of Saarland. Uh, they were two professors that had invented a device to detect hail. So they detected the number of hits per square meter, they detected the size of the hail and the speed at the hail uh, falling on the ground. So we went there because it probably it would be a good idea to design something to move the solar panels with trackers in case of high storm to avoid them to be damaged like here with tracking uh, with, with a high storm. Uh, we didn't succeed because uh, ice. Uh, ice, ice, high storm. Ice. Uh, yes, ice. <laughs> Manufacturers warranty and here there is a problem because I have been in, in trials with uh, uh, with manufacturers and uh, promoters, which are very interesting. For instance, you, you wake up one morning and see the plant completely spoiled by hail. So you go immediately to the insurance company and say, hey, my, my plant has been spoiled by a, by a hail storm. And they, they go, they send the expert, and they say, oh, yes, yes, but sorry, but this, this is below the size that the manufacturer, the manufacturer says that up to one or two centimeters at 20 meters per second, they resist the glass, the, the tempered glass resists the impact. So it's the responsibility of the manufacturer. We are not going to pay, they say, the insurance company. So you go immediately to the manufacturer and say, oh, look, look, uh, my hail, uh, my, my plates, the plates I bought to you, they have been damaged because the, the size of the, the hail was one centimeter. How do you know that they were about one centimeter? Oh, uh, well, uh, I, I see no hail. No, no, it has already been melted. <laughs> so. So you get in nobody's land and uh, with the plant totally spoiled. This, this has happened to me in several occasions, not, not too much because hail is not very important, but it has happened. So that's why not insurance companies, not manufacturers want to have this device of the University of Saarland. This is wind, this is flooding, and this is flooding. In uh, Guadiana, in southern Spain, that's Japan, but in Guadiana, a uh, uh, flood of Guadiana River took a uh, whole plant and uh, spoiled the whole plant. So we, we didn't even consider that. So we were very conservative. How how I am on time? You good? Okay, good. Uh, something that nobody counts. Premature, premature phase out of unamor unamortized manufacturing equipment. So what happens when you have the boom of the solar PV industry and start buying sophisticated equipment, most of it to Germany and Japan. Mm? This is the very, the very good business of Germany. It's not selling modules or installing modules. It's selling sophisticated machinery to cut uh, the, 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 the woofers and to make the cells and so, all these things. So these are, uh, and what happens when you receive the equipment and in, five, in, in, in two years, much before you have amortized the equipment, you have to throw it to the, to the basket because, because a new technology has emerged and you do not sell a single module more with this technology. So this is a cost. This is a very huge cost, very huge cost, which is not in the side of the, of the energy producer. It's in the side of the manufacturer. But if you want to be honest, you have to calculate this. So we have calculated this as 2.8%. Mm -hmm. Because there is an ultra fast, this is our world today. This is the capitalist world, ultra fast phase out, idle production, long term plans, clashing with short term markets or government movements. In the case of Spain, it's government movements. Financial cost, 
have not been considered, only have considered the, we have considered the, the material equipment and the, the investment in the equipment, the equipment goods. Insurance, you are not going to have a plant of 100 kilowatts or 3 megawatts or 20 megawatts without having an insurance. And insurance is money, and money is energy, as I will explain soon. So we have calculated this as 0.5% of the total energy uh, that is going. This is a fixed cost. You have to pay month by month, the insurance company, uh, just to, to, to allow them to go and say, hail is not my problem, it's the problem of the manufacturer. But then you have to pay in any case. Administration expenses, you have to have, uh, normally, the, the, this is very complex. I have five files like this per each megawatt, and uh, it's, it's really, really complex. And I couldn't ha uh, handle by myself, and so contract, every, everyone has a, this is 0.7, you have to, an accountant, and to take all the figures, and to present invoices, and all these things, because you have to invoice monthly by monthly. You have to, there are, there are some, the labor we have considered is just indirect labor. We have not considered the direct labor as, as we will mention. But there is a lot of people working a, a, around the solar PV industry. For instance, consultant, notary public, public register, civil servants. You know how many people in Spain in the ministries are working for solar photovoltaic, in the solar photovoltaic divisions for stamping the permits and so on? There's a lot of people going there and taking money a, at the end of the month. Engineering college to, to, to stamp the visas, the legal firms, uh, notary publics, etc. 0.4 percent. Municipality taxes. Ah, oh, this is this is another very good point. This is the municipality of my little village. At the beginning, they say photovolcanic plant, uh, and and then they say, well, uh, it's 2.7 taxes on civil works. But civil works in a solar photovoltaic plant is not very much. So you pay the money happily. And they are very happy because it's much more than uh, paying the taxes for the licenses for a house. So they were very happy. But then, as the crisis uh, in Spain deepened, and uh, no more housing, and the bubble housing uh, was uh, burst, so they, the municipality said, oh, where, where are we taking the money now from? And they say, well, I think that wind and solar are very good business. So let's go for them. And then they, sp they, they, they pass from 2.7 or 2%, depending on the municipality, on civil work, to 4% of total project. This is money, this is a lot of money, 4% of the total project, it should be 4% of the, of the energy of the project. Why, uh, why this money is energy? Because municipalities then, they make the fallas in Valencia, and they spend all this with the money collected, they, they make big fiestas, or they hire helicopters, or something like that, for their citizens, and so on. So, we have... 4% of the project, I don't know how much, I don't know how much I, I calculated, 0.3%, so very modest. Cost of land and long-term ownership. So if I'm going to, to install a plan, I have to buy the land or rent the land in a contract not less than 25 years long. So this is a, a substation we were looking for for a customer, and this is a beautiful plot of land to install, uh, this is the national road, and this is a beautiful plot of land to make a photovoltaic plant. What happened when the farmer, the farmer is absolutely ignorant of what is a photovoltaic plant, the first year. In the third year, he knows that this is a business. So the price of the land multiplies at infinitum. So you get, you get the price 17,000 euros for hectare in ownership, 1,000 euros per hectare per year in, in renting, and then some lands, when they see that, sharply increase in value, especially when demand rise for location. So prepare for, for massive deployments because uh, farmers are going to take their, their share. Hmm? Uh, and of course, it, it, there is a number of talent spotter intermediaries looking for substations and places where to sell as intermediary to the promoters and to the investors. So it's, it's a full jungle. It's a jungle. So it's only 2.2%. So we are very conservative. Agent representative, that's a very interesting point. That this is very scientific. In Spain, in Red Electric Española, it's a pity that I cannot show you how it's evolving the mix, the energy mix here, minute by minute here. This is the night peak, the night valley, the daily peak first, the second daily peak, and then go down. Well, so the, the best, one of the best uh, uh, electric utilities in the world in managing the electric network is the Spanish one. Is Red Electric Española, you should go to their network, 
uh, is in English as well, and you can get a lot of information there. It's free and available. And they have uh, thousands of sensors in all Spain and even in Portugal and in the Atlantic and so on. So they can track how the wind flows are coming from the Atlantic or from southern uh, Spain or from wherever and how the clouds are going to evolve for sun to project. So they, they have very accurate predictions of how much is going to be produced in a plant here in the next six coming hours. So they have thousands of sessions and they are very good at doing that, probably the best ones in the world. But they, they say you have to do it through an agent representative. What is that? I cannot go because they, they force me. I mean, by law, I am forced to tell to the, to the operator, well, tomorrow I will generate so many kilowatts hour. But besides, I have to say, this is the day before. But the hour before I generate anything, I have to say to the operator, and the next hour I will generate something. So this is almost impossible for a private investor. But it's not impossible for an agent representative, which is enhanced, it has enhanced sensors and programs and software programs and so on. So this, these guys, it's a, it's a legal obligation to contract. They sell electricity to the market and they are responsible not to deviate plus minus 5% on what they have projected because otherwise we will get penalties. Or, so we translate to them the penalties, the possible penalties, but they have a cost. This is the cost that they have the uh, agent representatives. This is prescription, inscription, registration, bonds and fees and something like that. I will pass because this is very, very tough and, and uh, now we have calculated a zero. I will pass it. First, exhibitions, promotions, conferences. Ah, oh, that's uh, another big portion of energy. So I came by plane here, and this is, uh, I am to going to talk on photovoltaics. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of energy that you have to embed into the Spanish, or the French in this case, uh, renewable network. Eh? Okay, so this is Irena. I have seen the other day, I, was, I received mails from the CD uh, um, uh, Solar Concentrate SPC from the SPC organization, international organization, they were gathering in Abu Dhabi and the entrance to the conferences, it was not like this, so you have to take note. They were, the, the, the silver entrance was 1,000 euros, the golden 1,500, and the diamond, it was 2,000 euros for the conferences. And this is money, and money is energy. So we calculated as 0.5, I've been in many of them, and they are spending a lot of money in trips, in executives, traveling, hotels, expenses, etc. So, network stabilization. Oh, that's a drama. You need to stabilize the network and, uh, when you have intermittent energies. And we did that in Spain through combined cycles, mainly because nuclear cannot stabilize, stabilize the network, etc. So, it's Spain initiated that program and then with combined cycle, so we had, look at this. We had first, at the beginning, when we saw the Kyoto Agreement, because we were going to be penalized in 1997, we started a program in 2003 to install power in combined cycle plants, up to 22,000 uh, megawatts, 23, 26, up to here, hmm? 27, and now st we stop. Why we stop here? Installing more and more, because that was to comply with the Kyoto Protocol by uh, eliminating coal power plants and installing uh, combined cycle, which are the more efficient and the less polluting within the fossil fuel generating plants. So they, they were having a load factor of 39, 38%, 44 in the best time, but then they were decreasing and now they are almost stopped. Why? Because, I mean, <coughs> they were designed to work 5,500 hours a year, which is a load capacity of 62.8% on load factor. They never reached that. But now they are in the misery here. This is the misery. And because, because they, are, they are almost stopped. I mean, there is a crisis. They are not producing. And they only use this energy to balance the renewable energy networks. I mean, when, when there is no wind, then they, they switch on. When there is wind, they switch off. When there is sun, they switch on. They, they switch off and so, and so on. So this is, this is a backup for the renewable energy. And they are losing money like hell in the... In the in the uh, combined cycle plants, uh, to the extreme that they have forced the government to issue another law to protect them because they were going to be bankrupt. So that's the damage they have caused uh, when introducing intermittent energies without control. 
So that's uh, Kyoto, and so we have calculated 3.9% of total ROE when taking into consideration the losses only in combined cycles. We are not talking about massive storage, only back up, backing up, backing up instantaneously. This is, this is the storage, pump up or another massive storage systems. We can do it by pumping up. We have beautiful examples in El Hierro Island. I participated with the Canary government in another project in La Palma. It's a beautiful island, I recommend.